Hello, I'm Frédéric Desbiens from the Oracle mobile platform team. In other episodes, you learned about the security features of the Oracle mobile cloud service and how MCS authentication works under the hood. In this one, I will show you how you can write code to authenticate against MCS using the Android client SDK. But enough talk, let's get this demo started. For this demo, I will use a brand new app created in Android Studio. I added a logging activity to it. Some of the generated code is not needed, however. To be more specific, I removed the dummy credentials constant and deleted the usual logging task inner class as well as all references to it. The generated code also assumes that the username is a valid email address. You may have to change it depending on the way you define your mobile users in MCS. Also, I configured the app to use the MCS client SDK. I'm not showing this here since this has been covered in another episode. To implement authentication, there are three things you must do. First, you need to obtain an instance of the authorization class. This is done by calling the getAuthorization method on a mobile backend object. In this case, I simply use the default backend for the application, which I get through the mobile backend manager. Since this method can raise an exception, I need to enclose it in a try-catch block. The second step is to implement a callback method. Authentication happens asynchronously, and the only way to know if it was successful or not is to implement a callback method. The type of the callback must be authorization callback, which is an interface defining a single method called onCompletion. For the purposes of this demo, I simply log the success of or failure of the authentication attempt. A real application will do other things here, such as navigating to another activity, for example. Finally, the last step is to call the authenticate method. At a minimum, you must provide the current application context and a reference to the callback method. You can also specify a username and password, like I'm doing here. By the way, you need to call the authenticate anonymous method even if you do not require your mobile users to authenticate. Anonymous access to MCS resources is only possible if headers for the anonymous access key and mobile backend ID are set. One last thing I need to complete my application is to call my authentication method at the appropriate place in the generated code. Done. Let's now see what happens at runtime when the mobile users authenticate successfully. If logging has been activated in the MCS SDK properties, you will see entries such like these in the application's log we see the progress of the authentication process and, right here, that it has succeeded. I now have implemented authentication. Let's now spice things up a bit and retrieve the profile properties for the current mobile user. In order to do that, you must do two things. The first is to define a callback. This callback must implement the user registration callback interface. That interface specifies a single method called onComplete. A second parameter for that method is of type user and will contain values for all the properties defined in the realm associated to the mobile backend. Once again, I simply had login statements to my implementation, but a real application will probably keep a copy of the user object somewhere. The second thing you must do is to call the getCurrentUser method on a valid authentication instance on which the authenticate method has been called successfully. Since both methods are called asynchronously, I cannot simply chain the two calls one after another. The proper way to do it is to call the getCurrentUser method inside the callback I defined for authenticate. If I do that, I need to define the authentication instance as a class property. This is what you get in the application logs at runtime. We see the debug output from the framework, as well as the logging statement I added to my callback. The main takeaway from this demo is that the MCS client SDK really encapsulates the complexities of authentication. 
Yes, you need to write some code in order to authenticate, but this code will stay the same across all the authentication technologies supported by the SDK. This really shows how the SDK makes you more productive. That's all for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time.